Have you ever wanted to be an engine that powers a great roaring train ripping across the digital um, lands? Well, you can because, hi, this is Amanda, CEO of Multitude, and it is the multi-crew drive. This is when we are making it especially tasty for you to join the multi-crew, which, going back to my metaphor, lets you be the engine that powers Multitude. It's a membership program that lets you fund new work from us and get exclusive stuff. Now, it's a great time to join all year round, but in these two weeks, it is especially great because we have set a goal of reaching 100 new and upgrading members. And to make it worth your while, we're doing a bunch of special stuff. We're having several hours of a telethon on Twitch where we play trivia and games that anybody can attend. We also have six brand new podcast episodes featuring multitude hosts. Misha is teaching Moya all about the ocean. Me and Corinne and Eric are talking all about reality TV. There is so much more. Isabel, And Amanda Silberling are here with me to debate and make a competition of emails. It's incredibly good. Julia wrote a whole RPG about Helios being hungover, okay? You can only listen to these episodes if you join the multi-crew. And if you join by September 27th, you also get a free enamel pin, and you get your name inscribed on a literal plaque on our literal wall here in the Multitude Studio if you're on an annual plan. So learn all about the multi-crew, why you should join, and why it is worth your while to be the engine that powers us, all at multicrew.club. That's multicrew.club. I remember a time before the Cascade dried up. Here in Verticello, the four nations of plant and bug people flourished and thrived but the great waterfall that fed the land slowed to a trickle, revealing a vast salt sea and unknown islands. The only guide were the words of the 13 dried carvings. The water will slow to fall, but the tides are turning. Find the infinite lake to replenish the world and discover the salmon who will grant you a wish of whatever you desire. This marks the beginning of the tide as many green folk hauled onto ships to find the infinite lake and maybe riches, adventure, excitement, and purpose along the way. And what exactly is a salmon? Is that a berry? That was 50 years ago, and the tide rushes forward ever still. There are many stories caught on the wind between sails, but why don't we hear just one? Of a butterfly gunman with clipped wings, a ripened and explosive piece of produce, and a witch made out of tea. This is Join the Party Campaign 3, The Rising Tide. I'll sing you a song that all green folk know. Until, until the waterfall's home. That only began 50 years ago. Until, until the waterfall's home. We seek the deep lake and a wish-granting salmon. Until, until the And load up the cannon Until, until the waterfall's home <laughs> Oh, rush on the tides Down through the cascade An adventure of ships A ceaseless parade I dream of rooms Buried in the deep below But we can't well sleep Till the waterfall's home I think whoever's PS2 this game is running on should, like, clear out the air vents Rude. and take it to a Babbage's or something. I'm in this photo and I don't like it. Because it took a full week for this episode to load. <laughs> I didn't know where this road, this joke road was going, but I very much like the destination, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> you mean I'm supposed to vacuum out the air vents of my tiny computers what power all my video games yeah no. yeah you should sounds fair no. yeah, don't blow in the disc hole but definitely do some compressed air in the vents please <laughs> yeah i've i've not been doing that you, you know can... you're supposed to wash your curtains like once a quarter bitch please that's not <laughs> happening how do you even do that you're also supposed to like buy a new pillow every year and no one does bitch please pillows cost like 50 dollars now they're so expensive you think i have curtain cleaning time no you 2024 think I dry cleaning money i'm a millennial so it took a little while to load i think it's because you added that gloria dlc so mm. your ps2 is chugging now 
Mm -hmm. But now, as the sun rises over the Great Salt Sea, the compost facility, finally not in emergency mode, but returning to some sort of, like, quiet complacency in being the head of the world government, uh, and also that be far in your rear view mirror, which I'm sure all pirate ships do have. Um, <laughs> yeah. A backup camera <laughs> <laughs> in your in your in your backup camera, so you don't back into a you don't back into a government facility. It's Bartlett perched on the back railing, going. <laughs> honestly, that's what they sound like now. Honestly, yeah. honestly, uh, a text box appears on screen that says, "Hey, you're almost done with this story. Make sure to save and do all of the character upgrades that you need to." Oh, is this one of those things where, like, this is the last point to do anything before you continue because afterwards mm -hmm. you can't do anything else? Exactly. Like Spider-Man, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, my God, that makes me so emotional. <laughs> Another text box shows up and says, Amanda, stop being emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to real quick, just real quick level up to level 20 then, real quick. Yeah, guys, I have to make sure I 100% the entire skill tree before we go to the final arc. Sorry. Yeah, Actually, we do need to figure out if Umbi died in the night. Oh, so, I was going to wait to say that until <laughs> after the save point. Fuck. Bro, no, it's good. It's, it should be before the save point. No, this happened before the save point. <laughs> Damn right, it. Let me roll real quick. It's going to be like a two. Oh, I died. No, it's an 83. Okay. That's the furthest from death you've been. Yeah, good job, <laughs> Statistically not how it works, but, you know, in my heart. Let's talk about your level ups, folks. Okay. Hooray! I decided not to check Valda's before this. As always, we're using classes from Valda Spire of Secrets because we've always known that Wizard of the Coast is a bad company. And he uses AI and actually doesn't really care that much about making good stuff and improving the game. Uh, and we've only been borne out the more that we've been saying it over the last five years. So you are now level 13 using classes from Mage Hand Press's Vault of Spire of Secrets. Tell me what's going on with your characters. I'll go first. Okay. Yeah. So at level 13, my proficiency has gone up to plus five. Wee! Exciting wow. stuff. My hit points are at 96. I am the Wee! beefiest witch alive. A. And I took my ability score increase and I added it to intelligence to bring that up to a plus two, which I am nice. excited about because my history and arcana and stuff were, were not as high as I thought that they needed to be. Julia, just roll that 20s. I don't know. I don't know why you even matter. <laughs> but... um. I also gained my first spell slot in seventh level spells, Ooh. which is very exciting. And I gained a new Grand Hex. I know my previous Grand Hex that I've taken has not yet revealed itself. Oh. So now I have two secret Grand Hexes that I haven't been able to break out yet, but I'm Yo. very excited to. Oh, because, shit. Because you've been keeping it a secret for so long, what is a Grand Hex? Explain. A Grand Hex is like a witch ability that is particularly strong. Oh, okay. More or less. So basically, I think I listed off a couple of them last time, but you could get one that's like a poison apple, which like basically works the same way a witch's poison apple would. There's one that I used in our live show, which allows me to enchant an object so that it can fly, for example. Mm. Another one that I haven't taken, which I was thinking about the logistics of and is very cool, but I didn't have a chance to like really find a way to utilize it properly is the witch's hut, which is basically I can make myself a Baba Yaga hut. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. And for this campaign, maybe not the best choice for Kami on the high seas, but for any other witch campaign that gets to a Grand Hex level, I would highly recommend it. So Grand Hexes are like abilities and they're not like spells like your regular hexes. Correct. It doesn't take a spell slot for me to, to do them. Got you. Love it. Now, Julia, have you considered though Sea Whip with legs? I have, but it has to be something that is 15 feet cubically. Mm. And I believe our ship is bigger than that. I, I asked Eric specifically last time oh, I took yeah, my Grand Hex, exactly. and he's like, nah, the ship's bigger than that. Have you considered Harold with legs? Ooh. <laughs> Promising. Have you considered our biggest barrel? What with little chicken feet? <laughs> oh, do we have a 15 foot barrel? I'm sure. That yeah. sounds insane. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Brandon, can you just calculate the uh, the volume of a cylinder real quick for me? I Okay, wait. Let's see if I get this right. It's going to be height times pi r squared 
It's going to be the volume of a cylinder. Let's see if that's right. All right. Well, Brandon's figuring that out. Amanda, what's going on with Troy? Yay. Troy is a level 13 gunslinger. My hit points have gone up to 95, so actually less than the the beefiest person in the world, Cammy. I get an ability score improvement, which I split evenly between intelligence and wisdom. Troy now has a plus one to both instead of a plus Whoa! zero to both. I'm so proud of him. This has been my plan since level nine, and I am so excited <laughs> to finally be here. Uh, he's learned a few things things over the course of the campaign. So proud of him. Yeah. I also got a new class feature for Gunslinger called Dire Gambit. Ooh. So basically, whenever I score a critical hit, I regain a risk die. You should try getting a critical hit one Amanda, of these days. Amanda, please just get a critical hit. Yeah. I beg of you. Does that double, like, does that stack with your crits count as like 18, 19, and 20 or whatever? It sure does, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And then I do have my proficiency bonus up to five. Nice, 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 Need nice, 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 nice. All right, Brandon. I'm I'm afraid, but just just rip the band-aid off. There's nothing to be afraid of, Eric. I'm perfectly sane and fine. <laughs> nice. You know the thing sane people say. <laughs> First of all, I do want to say nail it. It is height times pi r squared. I am a genius. But Umbi, yes, also got his proficiency bonus up to plus five and also got an ability score improvement, which I added both points to my intelligence, which puts it up to 20, which is the max. Oh, hot damn. Yeah. Damn, plus five flat. Look at that. Yeah, plus five flat. And that means my like my arcana is up to plus 10 bonus, which is nuts. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gotta love a min-max character. I mean, that's it. what they're there for. Love it. My HP is up to 81. My bomb save DC is up to like 18 now, so good luck dodging my bombs, mm-hmm. Eric. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My saving throw is only a 16. You go, Brandon. <sighs> but more importantly, I've learned one new bomb formula and one new discovery. And the bomb formula I took was a formula called Seeking Bomb. And we changed it a a tiny bit because when you hear seeking bomb, you assume it sort of means like a heat seeking missile situation. Yeah. Basically, what it originally was is you don't take disadvantage if you throw a ranged weapon if someone was in five feet of you, which is the normal rule. But we, Eric and I talked and we changed it to you don't take disadvantage if you throw a ranged weapon past your max range. Gotcha. I like that, though, because, you know. Umbi and I guess alchemists, the mad bomber within the alchemist class is like, you're throwing these bombs. So I like the idea that the seeking bomb like has its own little propulsion system. Yeah. That makes it go farther. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For flavor, I like the idea that just how you've equipped Troy with some exploding bombs, he's taught you a bit about like, you know, ranged projections. Oh, I love that. Right? Yeah. Like we did crossbow practice. Yeah. Aww. Cute. That's cute. You like brace it on your forearm now before you throw the bomb. Doesn't really help, but you like it. Yeah. I love that. Okay. That's Kanan. Kanan. And then I also, my new discovery that I took was called Alchemy of Transformation. Oh, God. I have mastered the alchemical secrets of shifting matter, which allow me to brew the following potions. And two of them are classic potions from vanilla D&D called Potion of Gaseous Form, uh, which just allows me to do gaseous form, which is tight. And then Oil of Slipperiness. But there's three other ones that are OG from Valdas, which are tight. They are called Sandstone Solution, which basically I pour a potion onto a stone and it can become mud. Or if I pour it onto mud, sand, or quicksand, it can become stone. Ooh, Ooh, and there's nice. some fun things around that. Like, what about if you get a creature stuck in it? You know, there's some fun stuff there. And for the lycanthropy. And lycanthropy. Ooh. Well. 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 It's been. Uh, yeah, second out. one is called Aqua Fortis, which is a cool name, first of all. And second of all, it basically, like, debuffs something it's like an acid that you can throw upon like a shield or a shoot of armor or a weapon and it debuffs it by like minus one like permanently and then if you get do cumulative minus one penalties eventually like the weapon can be like destroyed oh yeah like rusting grasp yeah 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 yeah, exactly and then finally the last one is called chameleon concoction which is i'm excited to do which is basically i turn into a chameleon where I drink it and your skin camouflages to match the color and texture of your surroundings, gaining you advantage on stealth checks as you make <laughs> stealth checks you make to avoid being seen for one hour. No, no, I think you should become a chameleon. <laughs> yeah, 
the liquid hue rapidly shifts to match whatever material it is nearest to. So it's not just like a static one. Like I can, I'm basically like transparent at that point, you know? Oh my gotcha. God. That's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Is there going to be a lot of naked umby like running around? <laughs> Eric, what have you been imagining? Because that's what I've been imagining this whole time. Oh, okay. Naked okay, umby, naked, naked umby. Well, I just <laughs> heard about it. So I'm only imagining it now. <laughs> All right. Well, that all sounds nice. Yeah, and that's it. There's a lot of other cool alchemist discoveries. If anyone wants to pick up Valda's, it was oh, really hard for me to pick between them. So yeah, go check them out. Yeah. It's pretty good. And if people don't remember 55 episodes in, if you go to jointhepartypod.com slash Verda dash Stello, Eric and Mike from Maychan Press made free downloadable PDFs with the steps for each of our particular classes. You have enough to roll a character and start going as a little preview for Hell yeah. what you get when you get Valda's. It's such, a, it's such a little crumb of this wonderful, wonderful book. Truly. Mm, so tasty. So tasty. It's like, ooh, I, I want know. the crumb. Oh, I like the crumb. Now I want the whole cake and then buy it. Wow. <laughs> That's so true. It's like a free sample. And you're like, I do want a Cinnabon. Yeah. Eric, I did also think my one of my things that I was considering was Lazarus Bolt because it's you basically get to bring someone back to life. But we have we have our doctor friend. Havana mm. Tropicana. But I was thinking, how would I do that in story, like in flavor? Yeah. And I was thinking, what if I like somehow got like one of those stick needle in your chest adrenaline things mm -hmm. yeah. but instead there's little bitty bombs and the bombs go into your bloodstream and then tiny explode in your heart to make it pump <laughs> that's how science works that's why medical procedures are so expensive right <laughs> Because of the tiny bombs in your they blood? They gotta shrink those bombs down. They gotta shrink they gotta the shrink bombs shrink down. The bombs yeah. down. Yeah. That's not, not how aspirin works when you think about it <laughs> in terms of loosening clots. <laughs> all right. Well, as you all wake up on this beautiful day and you all save in slot three. And Umbi's not dead. No, Sorry, Umbi's have we been dead. able to save scum this entire game, Eric? No, no. <laughs> okay. No, not at all. <laughs> the developers have been watching you the whole time. As you save, everyone wakes up in the next day. And Gloria has been up early. And she's sitting on the deck in a rocking chair that she repurposed out of uh, out of some old old sacks of grain and just some random wood. Hell yeah. And she's warming a cup of coffee on top of her travel-sized kiln. Hell yeah, I love that. Finally, it's exactly as hot as I like it. Slurp, slurp, slurp. I'm a glow worm. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Does she glow when she drinks warm liquids? Oh, you know it, buddy. Yeah. Oh. If only I could remember how worms worked like I did when I was in biology class. I don't, but who, who can say? Uh, Thorax. Eric, I can tell you, worms don't drink coffee. <laughs> Wow, Brandon, you know all worms? You know all worms? That's true. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I don't know you all worms. You don't think a worm would drink coffee if they had the chance? Brandon, what if Lauren turned into a worm? Would she still drink coffee? Probably. She'd be the coffee worm, though, instead. That's true. <laughs> I do put coffee grounds in, like, my compost so that worms eat. So maybe worms do eat coffee. Worms are eating wow. coffee every day in your house, bitch. Brandon, you, you sound so fucking ignorant right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, I'm sorry I've called you bitch twice in the last 28 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in front of you, there are three boxes that are laid out. Huh? Gloria is keeping this ramshackle rocking chair moving by leaning on her strawberry hammer, which she has here. She's like using it as like, I don't know, like a like a pole uh, that they use in Venice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Gondolier pole, yeah. Yeah, it's like a gondolier pole, thank you. I was like, I don't know any of these words. I'm just going to say Venice, so they're going to know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We got you. <laughs> They'd be like, well, it's nice to get back to what I'm best at and with my favorite tools. So uh, I ho I made you all something because you helped me out. And with your favorite crew? Well, <laughs> I guess, yeah, it's early enough. Well, everyone else I know is dead, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. I just wanted to make sure you didn't make, like, new best friends while we were gone at the hold. I, had, I didn't have enough time. A lot, there was a lot, a, lot of, a lot of drama, a lot of emergencies going on over there. Right. And I just don't have to save that drama for your mama. Right. <laughs> That's an incredible saying. Can I write that down? Right. Feel free. I like when the, how the words sound similar. Troy disappears below decks to grab a pen. <laughs> Okay, so Troy will get his item last, but I okay. made items for you. Yay! Well, Gloria made items for all of you, as Yay! promised. Thank you. Uh, who wants to go first? Whatever is most fun for you. You know, let's go with Umbis first. Let's go in reverse. Umbis? Umbi, Gloria has a small box for you. Mm. 
although it's about the size of a tissue box, it is very, very, very heavy. Oh, it's so dense. You got to make it dense if you because it's going to be dense with cool stuff. Whoa. Yeah. I hope you're not mad, but I had to swipe one of your bombs to make something interesting. You more. bastard. I'm just kidding, Gloria. <laughs> I knew you were, I knew you were going to say that. I was prepared for it. <laughs> Uh, and I'm mean, you pop it open. And the reason why it is so heavy is because this little box is lined with lots and lots of metal. And inside is kind of like the shape of a potato. And it's all wrapped up in some sort of metal foil. Okay. And as you open it up, you see that one of your bombs have kind of been repurposed. And it is glowing inside. It's like this red warm glow as we always talked about like umbi's bombs are just like little like little vials dropped into bigger vials yep so it's like inside of the big vial and with like the little the fuse and stuff taken out now there's this like coal that is just warm and red on the inside here hell yeah Hell yeah, what is this? This sounds fucking cool. I love it. And now the inventory window pops up. This is the hot potato. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Past Us, right? <laughs> Good job, Past Us. Good job, Past Us. The hot potato activates on your command word, and it heats up in one round. It heats up in six seconds. If it touches metal, it has the properties of the heat metal spell which means it will do 2d8 damage. Oh, tight. Okay. Also, if you leave it once it is hot, if you leave it next to a bomb, it will take one round until it explodes. Cool. Oh. Like it's hot, it ignites it will ignite the fuse for you. You got to leave it there though. Okay. Here's the fun thing. Because you have potions, right? And I assume that like you're making these potions the way that you you use your reagent dice, right? Mhm. You can use numbers of reagent dice to make the hot potato heat up even more. And depending on whatever the material is, negotiable with me, you can melt through pretty much anything. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, ooh, we put in the mad and mad bomber over here. Now, <laughs> if you have used reagent dice and you are melting through something, you can roll a d10. Now, on a one through seven, it will make a hot potato sized hole as it melts through the thing, which again is it's the size of a baked potato. Yeah. A medium sized baked potato, <laughs> you freaks with giant potatoes out I there. I love a giant <laughs> potato. You potato perverts. That giant potatoes are the size of corgis. Like, come on. Come <laughs> on, guys. Basically. However, if you roll an eight, a nine, or a 10 on this D10 roll, the object you are melting fully crumbles. Yo. Yo. So let's say, for example, it is a wall. 70% chance you make a potato-sized hole in it. 30% chance it just falls apart and melts. Yeah. Crazy. I'm going to make so many holes and so many ceilings. I'm so excited. Also, for each reagent dice you pour on it, that heat metal spell goes up by 2d8. Oh, sick. Okay, cool. That's a lot of damage. Hey, Eric, that's cool. That's also important because you can attach the hot potato to an arrow which will deal 2d8 and upscaling fire damage. That's cool. Cool. <laughs> However, remember, this is a singular item. And for a lot of these things, you got to like, it goes somewhere. Like yeah. it melts into the ground or you fire it or you leave it next to a bomb. So you're going to have to go pick it up. But it won't like, your bombs won't destroy it because it's made out of bomb. It won't get destroyed unless it gets really, really, really messed up. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, Gloria, this is awesome! All right, Troy, you can come back up uh, with a pen. So, Mama, what was it again? Leave the drama for your mama. For your... <laughs> Incredible, Gloria. You are not just a smith of metal, but of words. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, Troy. That's a very nice thing to say to an old woman. I think it's really nice that um that we, we asked you to come here to help us, and you brought us presents. Because it was more like, whoa, this hammer, it's got to be glorious. Got to give it to her. And then you, like, made us stuff. And that's amazing. It is amazing. And I hope that you don't mind that I, um, I'm i re-gifting something to you, Troy. I was like, oh, I was about to make you something. And then I looked around in my in my big bag of stuff. And I'm like, oh, Troy would love this. So I did this. I, I've shined it up for you and I sharpened it for you. But I think you're really going to like these. 
That sounds even better because it is not just a gift for me. It is a gift for you of not having a thing you do not want. So someone gave me the gift and I'm giving the gift on to you. Like I, it is passing through me, which is something that you do as, a, as an arrow. It bounces from one place to another place and it bounces like that. Oh, I thought you meant my arrows pass through my enemies, but that as well. Well, that too as well. We are all saying the same thing. Troy, open the box. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, Troy will take the box. Great. Inside are three metallic arrows that are shined and incredibly pointy. Ooh. They are like, they're sloped like a race car. And the, the the back of it is almost like a spoiler. You know, the fletching on the back of an arrow is like almost like the spoiler of a race car. Cool. Hell yeah. And they are gleaming and metallic. They are all made out of the same material. And the arrow point on the end looks real, real, real sharp. Gloria, these are amazing. I know, but don't you want to know what they can do first? I mean, cut through stuff, but um, is there like other special stuff? Do they explode like umbies? I hope not. And then the, <laughs> the inventory window pops up. These are called terminal velocity arrows. Yo. You only have three of them. Uh-huh. And Gloria cannot make more. Okay. So something I want you to know first. If these arrows hit on an attack, they may continue to ricochet. After any successful roll, either the initial one or the, the trick shot bouncing one, you may continue to roll. For every continuous hit, add a multiplier or add an enemy that this hits. <gasps> That's so cool. So, for example, if you continue to roll as these arrows continue to bounce and gather speed, defying the laws of physics, you may, and let's say you hit four in a row, you get 4x multiplier to your damage. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. That's insane. That's amazing. You may also try to hit four enemies. However, they have to be within two AC of the initial enemy that you hit. Mm. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. So it's like if you fire it at a boss, you can't like also hit the minions. If you fire at a minion, you can't also hit the boss. Like okay. this, they have to be within, AC, within the ACs. Good crowd control. And also... I have now that potion that can diminish AC. Yo, <laughs> so, yo, yo, yeah. yo, yo. You know, a, a very cool way to take advantage of like the ricochet aspect of trick shot, even when I hit. Yeah, exactly. So you, so you have to choose to fire one of these arrows and you only have three. Incredible. Well, thank you. I'll keep track of them. Gloria, you're the best. And if uh, if you want, like, I don't know, like maybe um, I'm getting really into like crochet. Uh, it's like this art where you make like a little sling and then he gestures down at the pumpy. So if you want like a like something for your rocking chair or like a hammock or or like, um, I don't know, like a cool holster for your hammer, like just let me know and I can make it. <laughs> Sorry, I got thrown off that the pumpy was in a crocheted sling on you the entire time. That's yeah. canon. I, it is. I'm, I'm reckoning with it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I was pepping. I was petting the pumpy. Oh yes, yeah, okay. Um, so Gloria's just patting the puppy on the head the entire time. Thank you, Gloria. You're a really good friend. I'm really glad we woke you up from your eternal slumber. Me too, as well. Okay. Well, I guess I have one more present. Who here didn't get a present yet? Me, me. Is it Havana Tropicana? I mean, Havana also didn't get a present. I, is it is it Harold and Syl? They also didn't get presents. Oh no! This one just says this one just says Cammy on it. I'm so excited. <laughs> this box is long and thin, kind of something that you might carry a map in, like a like Ooh. a big map. Okay, I'm the navigator canonically, so if it is a big map, I'm very excited. Oh, it's no, it's a book. It's a book. It's a book. <gasps> Nah, bitch, I got you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just open it. Okay. Cammy opens it. Uh, what's important about it, I, I, there was some, I had this weird metal ingot I've been holding on to for a while that I found in my big bag of stuff. And I'm like, where did I get this? And I, I remember I, I, years and years and years ago, I found it in the woods. And I'm like, you know who would like this? Cammy. And then I did something with it, and it kind of works with your whole vibe. And you pull it out, and it reminds you of a yoga mat. It's not a map that's rolled up. It's kind of like yoga mat-ish, but you lay it out, and it is a tea mat. And it is made out of chain mail. And it, it's kind of like this, this blur of black and white metal, and it alternates uh, with each ring of the chain mail. 
And as you roll it, you roll it all the way out. It's large enough for a tea ceremony of two people. And on the end is a little metallic frog. <gasps> that's kind of like attached to the end like a keychain. I love him. Well, he can be your friend as long as you play with him nicely. <laughs> the inventory pops up, and this is the ceremonial cape. Whoa. Whoa. So you can wear this as a cloak or a cape. It's pretty heavy, but that's because it gives you plus one AC. Ooh. Yay. Thank goodness. 14 now. It also <laughs> comes with the little frog keychain at the end. You can use it once for it to rib it, and hopefully it will distract someone to make a DC 13 con check so you can have, they will have disadvantage against a follow-up spell that you used against them. It's very Ooh, fragile because cool. this is left, the leftover metal that, that Gloria had, so she turned it into a little a lethal frog. Okay. So you can hit it once and it'll rib it. But the main thing that this thing can do, I inscribed something very special in it that I think only, that I think uh, only someone with your, with your abilities would be able to access. <laughs> And you can do something with this called sit for a while. You can magically compel a creature within range to have tea with you. They will sit on your mat, and you two will be brought to a calm, demi-plane pocket. They will stay for as long as you can keep them occupied. They are willing to hear you out if you ask them questions and keep a conversation going with you. They will always stay a minimum of one full round. Okay. So they will stay at least six seconds, but you're trying to keep them there for as long as possible. Cool. While in this demi-plane, Nani will stay in the real world. You cannot bring Nani with you. Okay. That's fucking awesome. Hell yeah, dude. Everyone, everyone just needs a chance. To, everyone needs a chance to take a breather, even if they don't know that they need it. Just like everyone needs a cup of tea, even if they don't know they need it. Exactly. I am yeah. a I'm a bean juice coffee lady, so I'm fine. You'd probably like, like, a pue or something like that. You know, something very caffeinated and very, like, bitter but rich. It goes right through me. I'm a worm. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me drop these items in the chat. Being Eric. There you go. Yeah, I got to think of a good command word. Hot potato. Yeah, I think it was just potato. Yeah, that's true. What? Hot Amanda, Amanda's thinking. Butter. Butter. Bacon bits. <laughs> Ooh. That's good. That's good. Like, what, what's the funniest condiment for Umby's voice to say? Me sour or... cream. Right, but that, that doesn't, like, hit. Sour cream and chives. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> He's like, no, my command word's a full phrase. <laughs> like, my password to get into my bank. <laughs> All right, folks. So Gloria says, I'm out of presents, and I don't tell the others that I didn't make presents for them. I thought you were going to say for a second that she was like, I'm out of presents, and now I die. <laughs> No, Gloria, I saved your life for a reason. No, I'm not going to die for a long, long time. Good. I have scores to settle, both on this plane and the next. Good. Do you have to roll a D100 every time you go to sleep? Nah, man. Cool. Does vengeance keep us young? Absolutely. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Vengeance is a, is an, is a renewable energy source with no cost. <laughs> that sounds great. Troy writes that down, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, where are we heading? What are we doing? Well, the key with the gaze told us where they're at. Mm -hmm. So w we going to go there? You want to go there? You want to go to the Mango Crossing? I check map. Sure. I find out where that is. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So on your map, this is on your standard issue map, uh, they're actually Mango Crossing is actually on there. Uh, oh. geographically, which I think is kind of interesting. We've had mm -hmm. a lot of other places that are like word of mouth yeah. or, or it's like for event reasons, like the invitation sent you towards the bullseye games and all that stuff. Or like you had to find out about the book depository park, but this one is actually on the map. Mm. It is kind of close to Leggy Island and book depository park. If you so choose to peruse your way over there. But uh, Mango Crossing is like a geological feature. And is a is kind of like a medium sized island over in that part of the map. Eric, I mean this complimentary. It sounds like a Mario Kart map. That's fine by me. Cool. Oh, 
I mean, that's funny that you do that, Eric, because I was going to say it's great that it's on the map, but it doesn't super matter because we do have Michigan J. Compass who is going to lead us there. <laughs> Hello, my lady. Hello, my darling. Hello, my Frank Tom gal. Let me look at this thing. Oh, I think you should go north by northwest. That way. Oh, I haven't heard this song in forever. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what else is older than the Cascade? What so else? Things. Did Me. you have barrels growing up? Me? Me. Hello, it's Amanda, and welcome to The Mid-Roll. I am so excited about this new arc. I cannot even express it. And normally I'd be excited to welcome our newest patrons here in this moment, but we actually had a ton of people join our Patreon for free. A new thing you can do is follow a creator on Patreon so you, you know, keep track of, like, the stuff they release that's free and maybe you, like, want to join as a patron, but you're sort of waiting a little bit. So if that's you, and if you've joined us at patreon.com slash join the party pod for free, or maybe you want to upgrade and you're waiting on, you know, paycheck or a new job situation, then go ahead and follow us. And when it is time, you can upgrade to a paid member, which gets you such goodness as Party Planning, our bi-weekly podcast where we made a tier list of what Brandon called rich people activities, which set off a slew of discussion in our patron-only Discord. It was truly one of my favorite pieces of content that we've made this year. And only available to patrons at patreon.com slash join the party pod. So join now, folks. Speaking of incredible content, it is also a very special time here at Multitude. It's the Multi-Crew Drive, where we are trying to add 100 new and upgrading members to the Multi-Crew, our membership program, by Friday, September 27th. That's just a few days from now. Because your support sustains our business and fuels our growth and makes our hearts warm and fuzzy, we're doing three very cool things during the drive to thank everybody who's a part of the Multi-Crew and hopefully entice you to join. First of all, every single member is going to get an adorable enamel pin that says support homegrown podcasts. All of you. It's going to be great. Second, everybody who's on an annual plan will have their name inscribed in the, him, this certifies we're the best crest. Incredible. The annual plans in particular help us plan for the future while giving you two months free on your membership, so it is well worthwhile. And of course, you are also getting six exclusive, standalone, brand new podcasts to celebrate this year's multi-crew drive. Four of them have already come up and there are more coming this week, including me and Isabel J. Kim, an actual attorney, going head to head in an email writing battle designed by Eric and commentated by Amanda Silberling and a incredibly fun discussion all about podcasting, the medium, the future of it, what's going on in podcasting with Eric that I highly, highly recommend it. So if you like bonus episodes, if you like pins, if you like supporting independent media, please come on through and join the multi-crew at multicrew.club. Join before September 27th for your free pin or to get your name on the annual plaque. But even if you're listening to this afterward, it is a great time to join the multi-crew and you can still listen to that bonus audio. All right, multicrew.club. We are sponsored this week by Mint Mobile, which is a wireless phone service provider that just tries to make it like pretty simple to get wireless coverage. And I can absolutely confirm as a person who has had my own phone plan since I was, you know, 18 or 19 and gone through many, many levels of hell in trying to like make accounts, change your billing, figure out how the hell to get support on various phone providers' websites. Mint Mobile's is a hundred thousand percent the easiest and most pleasant website to navigate of any phone provider I have ever encountered. It is incredible. You don't have to really call people. You can just get wireless service for $15 a month. It is incredibly useful. Specifically, they're having a offer right now where all three month plans are only $15 a month, including their unlimited plan, which all plans, by the way, come with high speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone and you can also bring your phone number with you, all your contacts. They really make it easy. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash join the party. That's mintmobile.com slash join the party. You can cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash join the party. 
Now, a little disclaimer for you folks, a $45 upfront payment is required, which is equivalent to $15 a month. It applies to new customers on first three month plan only. Speeds slower above 40 gigabytes on an unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. And now let's get back to the show. Oh, before we go, um, can we tell Kid to guard the cloud key with his life? Well, he already put it in the lock. In my head, no one would try to, like, pull it out in a kind of, like, sword in the stone sort of way. Or can pull it out, I guess. It's mm. like the ma- the magical key is in the magical lock. It's there. Okay. Right. Yeah. But I see your point. And Kid Cervantes walks to the bow of the ship and points to an island nearby with some palm trees. Looks nice. Oh, that's a really nice island, Kid. He puts up a, a cactus thumb like to, as a hitchhiker asking to be dropped off. <laughs> oh, y'all want to recuperate on that cool island and make sure that nobody uh, dangerous is coming toward the facility until we get a chance to get back? Two spiky thumbs up. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other five Cervantes siblings comes from a, a below deck uh, with a lot of your bed sheets. Um. Uh, and all of them, ho- uh, <laughs> in kind of a line, hop off of the front of the ship onto the other island. And then all of them go <laughs> and shoot down a bunch of palm trees. And also then <laughs> shoots the uh, the lady who's on the front of your ship. Hey. And, affix- and kind of lashes very quickly in a very Animal Crossing sort of way. <laughs> Puts together a very large raft with the bed sheets as the sail. And your lady, which is not a maiden head. Nope. If I remember correctly, That's right. kind of Not a fix to the front. And they all give you spiky, six spiky thumbs up from their makeshift raft they just threw together. You're really good, though. Honestly, it was pretty tight. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Okay. Uh, everyone comfortable giving them like a half barrel of rations just in case? And then a bunch of fish <laughs> bubbled. Of the I think they're like fine. They're good, but... <laughs> all right. Wow. I can't wait to learn more from you all. Gloria, will you teach me how to make furniture? That'd be really cool to, like, sleep in a bed of barrels and, like, sit in a chair of barrels and all that kind of stuff. I could teach you more than just repurposing barrels. What else would I want to do? That's a good point. And so we we have some things to do first, Troy, but there will be time for it. Yeah, yeah, but afterward, when we all survive and have a lot of free time. Of course, when we all survive and the peace comes. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. That always comes after big fights. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Regular and sustained amounts of peace. Yep. You guys are doing the thing where you repeat something I say in a way that makes me feel like you don't agree, even though your mouth is saying you do agree. So, Michigan, which way was it again? Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Go by Northwest <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you can you can head towards Mango Crossing. Mango Crossing. Don't eat the seed. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> Come on, Barbie. Let's go, Barbie. Mango uh, uh, crossing. Uh, 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 you have a little bit of time on your way there. Did anyone want to check anything or, or vibes or say anything? I would like to take the glasses and read the documents that I stole from the facility. Hell yeah. Mm. Oh, you're going you're gonna to blue skidoo into them? I would love to blue skidoo, and we can too. Julia, uh, Troy has knitted a little uh, glasses cozy. What do they call those things? <gasps> yeah, I don't know what yeah, they're called, though. Glasses chain. Yeah. Uh, for the glasses. It's Krogi, I think, but in my brain, I was like, Hokey? That's not it. <laughs> oh, the Krogi. Mine said yes. Gator? Crokies. No, that's Crokies. what people think is a mask and is not a mask. No, that's, no, they're called Krogis. You're, you're, you're yeah. right. Yeah. I also like the idea of knitting something to keep this thing safe because mm-hmm. it's, very, cause it's very precious. Cammie, as the, uh, as what usually happens, the floor falls out from under you and then comes back and you slam down as your knees skid against something. Uh, you are in a completely white space that goes on forever. Um. And then you hear ding, 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 as just words start being typewritten into the space around you. Too close. <laughs> You're like dodging them. They're inside of facts. <laughs> Two whomps this may concern. Ching! And it just flies right by you. Yeah. So these are just the ones you grabbed from the facts? Yeah, they were the ones that were specifically coming to this facility about the rotten key. Oh, yeah. The ones about the rotten key. Um, so 80% of this document is corporate bureaucratic nonsense. 
Do I hear the like hustle and bustle of an office in the background? Yeah, it's all very muted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you hear people go. <laughs> you hear a water bottle being a cooler bubbler being replaced. Okay. Someone tries to invite everyone out for drinks, and they all de quietly decline. <laughs> oh my Damn. worst nightmare! I gotta pick up my kids. Uh, <laughs> I gotta go. You have kids? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a divorce. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, let me see if there's anything good in these documents. Okay, what do you want to? Yeah, what do you want to know? I just want to know where this thing was first spotted. Uh, more information about it, whether or not it is intrinsically tied to Audrey. That's my thought process here. Mm, okay. Um, the rotten key was first sighted near the dissolving belt. It seems to be as it is charging through the ocean, kind of destroying everything in its path. Sometimes it gets slowed down by destroying a fleet. Sometimes it, the armada of rotten pirates takes down an island, but it is making a, the reports are saying it's making a straight line towards the compost facility. Okay. Okay. It also reports that they, it has kind of like a motley crew with them in this kind of larger armada of ships. Obviously, the, like zombified versions, there's like merchant ships that got turned, there's a battle, there's like, you know, some government agents that got turned, some pirates that got turned, but also there's some crazy characters with them as well, including a uh, monstrous anglerfish that is doing the kind of first wave muscle mm. and standing behind the rotten key, who is always on the front of the ship, leading forward with sword in hand, key pointing in the right direction. There is a desiccated but very large tree green folk looming behind the no. rotten key. Salix. I was in love with that tree. Sorry, buddy. Eric's like, I didn't mean to make everyone sad. Oh, no, I did, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I was in love with that tree. I'm sitting in it. You look so sheepish for a second. <laughs> no, I was like, I was going to say, who, me? <laughs> <laughs> who, me? Killing someone you guys liked and then bringing them back as a zombie? I, I would. Who would? Who would? Who would do that? Rude. 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 Whoever the just kidding I did it. I love it. Yummy, 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 yummy. Yummy. Okay. Sorry, did you want to be in a blank expressionless void while you learned that information? No. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. All right, Cammy. Well, I guess, I guess actions have choices. I don't know. Actions have choices. <laughs> I guess what? I don't know. It just, stuff happens. I don't know. Stuff happens. That's what you're going to get from that. So when the, this report went out, estimated time two to four days, depending on who they run into. So time is of the essence to the compost facility to batten down the hatches as this is all coming together. They're also, you know, consolidate, stay out of the way, come to the facility, let's all come together. Let's try to protect ourselves. In a f kind of like a, a final missive, it says all essential key retrieval missions should still continue. Hmm. Okay. So we, should, we still have to keep an eye out for the DK crew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got to look for barrels and bananas floating in the air. Yeah. Got to watch out. Cool. Cammy blue skidoos back out of there. Anything good? No, mostly bad. Oh, that's... Uh, mm. But uh, we we have a limited timeline to get the key with the gaze and then get back to the facility. Can I pitch you guys an idea I thought I had? What's yeah. up? All right, I, mostly I just want, want you to know... All right, I, mostly I want to see if I'm actually cracking or... You know, if I need to put some of this tin foil on my head kind of situation, you know? Okay. Okay. Do we think that the salmon just maybe doesn't exist and this is all a ploy? Maybe, like, maybe for some reason that they needed the keys to turn off the cascade themselves for some nefarious reason and then somehow they lost the keys and now they want the keys to get them back? And then they put out the salmon rumor so all the pirates would do their bidding and bring them the keys so they didn't have to do it themselves. 
Am I going? Am I losing it? I I don't think so. Which one? Am I? You don't think I'm losing it, or? <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's necessarily what's happening. Only because I rolled that nat twenty last time, and it seemed like that wasn't the case. I'm stepping through the the screen, and I'm hitting Cammy on the nose. I said <laughs> only Umbi's allowed to do this, not you too. <laughs> what? Whop. <laughs> No. Who was that? With, with the newspaper. I'm like, whop, whop, no. What's a natural 20? And then he winks at Eric. And then I whop. <laughs> I'll be on the nose again. Oh, shit. <laughs> Troy, who's not observed any of this, uh, says, uh, I think even if the salmon is like, Cammy, what's the thing in a book where it talks about like a shirt or something, but it's actually about love? Metaphor. <laughs> even if a salmon is like that. I would still rather have the keys than have them have the keys. And they wouldn't put so much time in sending important people to meetings in the diamond knot and putting money into like those creepy soldiers, what with the brains and, and like mm. making it, making Edie have, uh, you know, di- diplomatic immunity. If this wasn't something they wanted and if they want it, I want it. But first and for me. Yeah, I agree. More like dipshit matic immunity. Oh my um, god, and then Troy pulls the pad out again. <laughs> I, can't be- I can't believe this. I agree, I agree. I think we should own the keys regardless, for sure. I'm just worried, like, or my, my, my curiosity is if we put then put them in the lock and turn them all, what gonna happen? I don't know. I don't know either. Good, bad, but somewhere in between. It can't be worse than this, right? I mean, it could be a lot worse than this. I don't know. I think as long as we're prepared for any actuality, we'll be fine. And it's not just us. We know a lot of people who know a lot of stuff. And if they think it's a good idea and we all think it's a good idea together, let's do it. The the thing I don't want is just someone to make that choice for everybody. That's, yeah. that's what you got kings for, you know? Yeah. Okay. Like, imagine me as a king and I made all the choices for all of us. It'd be great. Like, is that just me or would that be bad? That would be bad. No, it would be awesome. That'd be bad. No, no, you'd be so good at it, I Troy. Mean, thank you, no, but no. no, I think Troy has a good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what? So if we open the keys, then... Oh, <coughs> so I didn't... Oh, I didn't see you all there. So what? If we open the keys, then <laughs> what's going to come out? Like, lava? Probably not lava. Like a, like a terrible disease? Hopefully not a terrible disease. Yeah, I mean, like, that's a good point. Like... Like, if, if the bad thing is the cascade turning back on to them, like, diverting the water from whatever they're doing by using the keys, and, like, that's still good for us anyway, you know? But but they but they want to turn the cascade back on. That's what everybody wants. The Diamond Knot does? Do they? The One World Government? We don't know that. Because, like, they seem to be getting pretty rich on, you know, not having enough and being in charge of what is left. Yeah. They're using the emergency situation to their advantage. I don't know. Me, Havana Tropicana, seems pretty sure everyone wants the same thing, which is turning the water on. Well. So I guess so. I mean, that's not so bad if turning the four keys. So, okay, the salmon doesn't exist. No one knows what the salmon is. And wishes aren't real. So worst thing that happens, the cascade turns back on. Not so bad. And then all the pirates are isolated from the rest of the countries. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing. It's like, I mean, I know this is, like, useless hypothesizing because on the other side, if they do want us to put the keys in the lock and turn the thing and turn the cascade back on for some nefarious purpose, you oh, know? Mm. like keep away, and they keep all the pirates inside the cascade. Yeah. I think I need to put the tinfoil from the hot potato on my head. Is that helpful? Don't take that apart. It will melt your face. Don't melt your face, Umbi. Don't melt, Umbi, don't melt your face. I didn't get it for you, so you can melt your face. Um, Gloria, mm. what do you think? Uh, do I think... What do I think will happen when the, all four keys go in there and if the salmon is there? Do you think it's worth doing? Yeah, like, what do you think that the, the one will... The government's motivations are. Yeah, because your city was right on top of where the salmon is, which is wild. Also, do you know anything about a big giant blackberry dragon? I forgot to ask you. Oh yeah, did you know about that? Did you ask their name? Um, I don't think I did, but I'm pretty. You, you all need to stop asking me a question and then give me mind alter and then giving me reality altering information, please. I, I beg of you. I thought we were done, and I thought I could move forward. I didn't ask the dragon their name, but I'm pretty sure they would have said something like, 
names don't exist. They are a construct of the weak, like you, my young child. I think it's Bramble Brax. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Some cute Eric would have made up. <laughs> uh, no, there wasn't a Blackberry Dragon when where I was living, and I don't know how the city ended up. In, and I used to live outside of the outside of the cascade, and now it's here. Mm-hmm. Refer back to Cammy's brain blast net twenty to see what <laughs> what possibly could have happened. How the world government cut it off from the rest of Vertistello and sent it inside of the cascade. What I think I want more than anything is I want to know what happens. I want to know what happens next, yeah. and we're only going to do that if someone is going to put. The four keys in the four locks. That was five, apparently, though. What do we do with that? I, that that's 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 crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. That's what I've been saying. I'm just here brimbling and brambling, and now you're telling me there's five keys instead of four? It's wild. It's wild. Wait, can Troy reach behind his shoulder blades? Is Bramble still there, or did he get lost in the airlock? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Didn't we leave him behind? We left him somewhere. No, I don't think he's with you. Uh, I don't think we okay. said either way. Okay. All right, Amanda, roll a d20 right now. That is a 14. No, Bramble's not there. <laughs> okay, no. good, good, good. That's as pretty long, funny. As long as he's brimbling and brambling back he's where he's He's brimbling and brambling somewhere else. All I don't right. know where he is, but he's not there. All right. And who's to say we can't take care of what happens next? I think what's important is that the locks are open and we do what's next. Because what this... What's been happening for what you for what's been going on for fifty years can't be better than this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I hear that. Can't be should, better than what happens next. Should we be like forging a giant fish hook just in case? We don't know what that is. That's a good point. I don't know what that is. Strike that from the record. Oh right, the salmon. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You don't know what you don't know what a salmon is. I could start working on various possible weapons that would uh, be good for whatever the salmon is. Or some kind of trap or net. Oh, uh, like, uh, yeah, I could put a net together or maybe a spear of some sort. Yeah. Or, I don't know, man. Like a basket? A basket. A basket. Maybe, like, start writing a really compelling speech that we could give, you know? Because you're a wordsmith, too, apparently. Yeah. yeah. You got all the wisdoms of, of aging. Okay, hold on. Troy, give me your notebook. Troy hands it over. Gloria throws it on the deck, and then wham <laughs> with the strawberry hammer. Did it work? Did it work? Is there is there a speech in there? Whoa. I know everything I need in my mind. I don't need to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, I thought oh. you were going to say, whoa. No. Bro, 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 as water starts to, <laughs> as water starts to fill up. Oh, no, <laughs> Harold. Uh, all right. Plug it, plug it up. I, I didn't think I had to make a rule about no hammers on deck, but here we are. Harold, uh, let's let's put Sill on the on the sitting over the whole um um duty, and can we can we oh <laughs> sitting over the whole duty? Good job, Sill. Um, and can we set sail real fast for Mango Crossing? Yar! We're still we're going we're going again. No hammer, Gloria. Love you like a mother that I wish I had. Uh, better than three out of five of them. No hammers on deck. Thank you. Huh. Huh. And, oh, that's yeah. not, and that's not just a rule for Gloria. That's a rule for everybody. Okay. Uh, you t- yeah, yeah, can't be an umby. I saw you that eye roll. Uh, I have eyes everywhere. Whatever. Ruining it for everyone. Yeah. Whatever. And then Syl opens eyes <laughs> throughout, the entire, throughout the entire ship. Cammy. Yeah? They didn't say I couldn't use bombs on the ship. Yes, well, that's always specific, been a rule! <laughs> you have a specific bomb area. You can mm-hmm. only do one rule at a time! That's not true, Umby! Go to your bomb area! <laughs> Remember, it's the, it's the sidewalk chalk on the crow's nest. <laughs> it's like one third of the crow's nest. I just pictured a meme that's like a mother off of Sasha Colby introducing Chaplerone at the VMAs, introducing <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Gloria is your favorite NPC's favorite NPC. Yes. Yay! Yeah, she is. Yeah. That was the joke. Okay, yeah. So y'all are making your way towards. You are making your way towards Mango Crossing. 
After a little while, you see almost like a big billboard in the water mm. that says book depository only 1,000 knots that way. Oh, cool. It's like one of those fucking signs in Texas for a Bucky's. Yeah, a one miles of those Bucky away. signs. Yeah. There's one in New Jersey that's like turn around 400 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> for sure. No time for amusement parks. Uh, yeah, as you go a little farther, there is another sign. That says, while you're at the book depository, learn what the salmon really is at Lake Encounter. I did want to learn. But how would they possibly know? Can we do that really quick? Like, how quick can we do that? Please, Umbi? No! If you remember all the way back from many, many eps ago, remember Lake Encounter is near the Leggy Island slash book depository park. And they will validate your parking if you go to Lake Encounter. Hold on, hold on, everybody. Hold on. Everyone shut up. Eric. Yeah. Do you think we should go check it out? It's up to you, my man. I did say that the rotten key would <laughs> is two to four days away from going. So, but it's up to you. Oops, okay. How many days is it going to take us to get to Mango Crossing? Your navigator asks. I think it takes about one one day. Okay. One day for you to get there from there. You got some time to play with. I think Eric's telling us we should I'm not, go no, to I'm not Lincoln telling you Hunter. anything. <laughs> I'm saying it would probably I take. I think Eric's heavily implying I that we have to time to go to Lake Encounter. Uh, you don't have time. You don't have time. If it takes one, I'm telling you. I'm not saying anything. Here are the numbies, okay? <laughs> Here are the umbies. <laughs> Woo! The rotten key will take two to four days from the time that that missive was sent out. Which was, was like yesterday. Uh, which was yesterday. It will probably take one day of sailing to go to Mango Crossing and then back to where you want to go. Oh, guys, let's just go afterward when we're all safe and have a lot of time. That's what I was going to say! Hey, great idea, Troy. There's always time after the fighting where everything's safe and fine and the same. Gloria, why do you keep saying that? It's really ominous. Again, if, you're, if I'm not right, then someone should tell me, but... <laughs> Um, on this sign for Lake Encounter, so the arrow before for Book Depository mm-hmm. Island was like was a straight line going like diagonally from bottom right to top left, right? Mm-hmm. This one for Lake Encounter is kind of like a big loop. It's kind of like like a roundabout almost, where it's like you got to make a big circle, hmm. but it's still going in the same direction that the Book Depository billboard from a little while ago um, was going. Is it like a drive through safari situation, or is it just like a loop? Or it's going around an obstacle. Yeah. It's kind of like going around. It looks like it's going around something. Okay. Yeah. It's like little forward, big curve, and then top left diagonal. Guys, like one of those headbands that makes it look like you got shot in the head by an arrow. Uh, uh, of course. Kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard describing traffic patterns on a podcast. It is. Yeah. But it's just like a roundabout. Like when you have to go straight through a roundabout, you've got to go halfway around and then straight again. you got to go around that bout. you got to go around You gotta around that bout. Um, and navi- and ra- Navigator Cami, you are coming close to Mango Crossing. Okay. Let's do it to it. Whee. I'm assuming Mango Crossing is the obstacle in the, in the midst that we have to go around. Maybe. As you are sailing forward, um, you start to see a island pop up over the horizon it is kind of you know it's almost tiered right like it's really it's coming out of the ground it looks like a big birthday cake Ooh, delicious cool there's the beach and a very wide base there and then there's kind of like another step up that's a little bit smaller and another step up and another step up and then there's like a lid and there's kind of like 10 tiers and then there's one small from far away small topper cake topper You also notice that there are some boats that are coming up in front of you in a kind of loose confederation here. You know, there's no parking lot. There's a loose confederation of boats in one group and another loose confederation of boats in another group. There is also a floating store that says the last store you'll need before Mango Crossing. Fuck yeah. Does it have a sign other than that, like the logo for the business? No, that's the logo for the business. Oh, okay. That's a wild logo. I love it. It's just like floating. It's on buoy. <laughs> the, the store <laughs> is floating on buoys. Hell yeah, I love that. We can just like peruse their wares. I would love some jerky. You think they have a wall of jerky? 
Probably. Okay. You think they have a jerky wall? Maybe. I hope so. Me too, Eric. Yeah, Troy will, uh, with his mare in her feet, find a, find a safe parking spot. <laughs> uh, Troy, make, uh, make a perception check for me. <laughs> oh, you mean the thing I now add plus one to? Ooh. Ooh. Gladly. Yep, so, nope, that's an eight plus one. <laughs> eight plus one? Nine? That's still a nine. Great, yeah. Say it with enthusiasm, Amanda. That's a nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a spot right up front. Wow. And Troy pulls in. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stay with the ship. You guys check it out. Okay. Okay. Do you want anything? Like a snack or a drink? No, just a book. Okay. Yeah, let's go. I want, I, I'm want. i thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I gotta pee. Yeah, but you're always all those things. Rude. No, see, see if anyone knows anything about what's up ahead. Yeah. See if they got some mangoes. See if they saw a weird key sometime. We're going to go into the store, Eric. Yeah, we we hop down. The sliding doors open up and go, Bing bong, another person's <laughs> going to the store. Hello, Avasti. Yar. Inside, this is a convenience store slash bait, kind of like bait shop. Oh. There's a lot of, there is a whole wall of jerky. Yeah. That is on the wall. There's various meats, various fruit leathers that's in big bags, kind of covering one whole uh, wall of the store. Oh, well, I'll help you find it, the thing that you need. Um, oh, man, I didn't come up with what green folk this guy was. What's his vibe? I'll help. Uh, a free, he's, free, he's friendly, old. He has a big floppy hat on. Ooh, okay. Um, I think he is... <gasps> he's a marshmallow plant. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, he's a marshmallow root, I think, specifically. That's cool. I like a patch. We've had patches of cattails before, so I think mm-hmm. like a, a patch of marshmallow with like mm-hmm. a big floppy hat resting on top of a bunch of them would be good. Yeah. Be like, well, I can help you off with whatever you need. Are you folks from around here? Oh, fellow old man, so nice to meet you. Oh, wow, you got some miles on this body, bud. I love it, Slap. I know, I know, I know. You know what I always say? If you can't leave a mark on a body, it hasn't been used hard enough. That's what I've been trying to tell everyone. When you leave a mark on him, he smells like green pepper. Oh. Shut up, Cammy. <laughs> when I, someone leaves a mark on me, I smell like marshmallow. Oh, Ooh. that's kind of nice. <laughs> it is, it is. Well, if you're not from around here, well, do you know you know what you're doing? No. No. Oh, not about Mango Crossing? Well, I'm glad that you stopped here at the only store you need before you go into Mango Crossing. Tell us about Wait, it. Wait, only store we need or only store until Mango Crossing? No, only store you need before you go into Mango Crossing. So there's okay. more stores? There's other stores, but mine's <laughs> the most important because, well, before I tell you the important thing, you're going to buy something, right? Sure. I would like one of every jerky, please. I'll... Wait, hold on. I want to see what other wares he has before you put our order in. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. Well, if you, if you pay for the jerky now, I'll tell you the important thing. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, you got to. I I have to scan every one, so you got to pull down each of the jerkies for me. Okay, I'm just gonna get one jerky right now, then. Okay, which one do you want? There's pot. There's pine pig. Yeah, that sounds good. And <laughs> okay, um, that will be ten to blooms. Okay, here you go, and a little tip for you. Oh, incredible! Oh, thank you, Con. Oh, Look both ways you, Con, before sir. you cross the street. Oh, th- uh, thank you, Con, sir. I really appreciate it. Uh, I never get t- tips like this. It makes an old man flush all the way up from the bot from my roots all the way up to my marshmallows. Cammy, you better slide him another to bloom. One more to bloom. Oh, another <laughs> that's tip. That's not a real tip. This is such a lovely day. I love it. Uh, w- what else do you have that I definitely couldn't find anywhere else? Anything fun? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give me one second. I don't, what are you rolling? Okay. Help. Oh, oh no. no, no. I hope you have to, thank you so much for coming into the place that you the only place you need to go into when you're here in when you're coming to the Mango Crossing. I'll be with you in one second. I just gotta talk to my friends here, but you gotta come in close because they need to spend something if they need to know the t- they, that's, that's going true. to happen. They didn't buy a single thing yet. No, they didn't. Uh Troy, make a perception check for me. Cammy goes unseen. <laughs> 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 All right, that's a sixteen plus one, seventeen. That's good. 17. Troy, you got a really good parking spot. Mm-hmm. You were able to slide in nicely up against this this bobbing store. But, you know, there are ships kind of around. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you double checked on your way in, but uh, maybe you got a chance to look around once you to survey your wonderful parking spot. I did it. 
once more. <laughs> Apart. <laughs> um, there are some key retrieval ships. Shit! That are bobbing around to your left. Uh, Sil? Yeah. Can you quickly make the ship look like a different ship? Like what kind of ship? Like a new one. What? Like a nice one. Harold said I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to change my body. I would like that, please, right now. Okay. So nice, sh nice ship mode? Nice ship mode. Okay. Cammy, you can see, uh, you know how every convenience store has that mirror? The big, like, circular mirror in the corner? Mm hmm Luckily, you look down and you see that a family of eight, all wearing book depository shirts, mm -hmm. <laughs> have just have walked in. And are going to be like, all right, I'm going to get you snack. We're all going to get snacks. And we're all going to get the snacks we like. Awesome. But as Cammy went unseen. Great. Then Cammy is going to continue being unseen. You can just continue being unseen. Be like, oh, where'd your friend go? Oh, I don't know. Probably the bathroom or something. Ah, uh, the cleanest bathrooms right before Mango Crossing. That's not the reason why people should come in here, but it is a perk. Man, it's nice. Um... Yeah, can I get that information before the those kids start yelling? Stuff? Like, oh, they're gonna start yelling. You know, kids are always starting to yelling. The book depository has really been ruined by kids. You know, I think it's a lot more fun to go to us at their old. I, you know, I say that every day. I say yeah. that I buy my 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 season pass and my fast pass yeah. and my elder pass for book depository island, and it's just never enough. They're always up in my space. And when I say kids, I do mean also green folk, like, to up to the age of, like, 60. And you mean a green folk up to the age of 70. Yeah. Right, yeah. 70 no. and older should really only be allowed a book depository. Of course, anyway. I say it all the time. What's, what's the kind of information we need? Oh, well, the, the, okay, the information that you need is that, are you going, you're going to Mango Crossing? Yeah. Okay. If you're going to Mango Crossing, you can't hurt any of the Tortangos. Okay. Are those, is that a green folk or a, a thing? Oh, you've never seen a Tortango before? No. Oh, well, it's a it's a turtle and a mango. The Tortangos. That's, okay, frankly, Here, I got sounds... a picture. I got a picture of them. And frankly, that so sounds kind of delicious. To, so is you that... know what to avoid. Should not eat them? No, oh, extremely not. Okay. Don't touch them at all. Don't hurt okay. them at all. Because if you come near them, the mama's going to get you. Oh. Yeah. What, okay, can I look at that photo? Yeah, you should look at the photo. What's it look like, Eric? So he, he, re he like reaches into his... And my head, he's also wearing really, really loose overalls. <laughs> so he reaches into his overalls, and he takes out like a stack of Polaroids, and he slides one to you. And they're on, on the beach of Mango Crossing, these baby turtles are crawling across the beach. They are about the size of a small dog, and they have these shells that look like a ripe mango, like the red and the yellow and the green. Cool. Cool. I love that. And they are like kind of like making their way into the water. There's like four of them. But you can kind of you see a tree nearby, so you're like, oh, that's a large <laughs> that is the size of a large dog. Yeah. The other thing you see in the background is that you can see a very, very large Tortango face kind of lurking in the water behind it. Mm -mm. Just like little things poking out, mm -hmm. like a little, like a, like a nose. Mm -hmm. Just like, just a sliver of head poking out, like eyes and like the top of snout and like, you know, the eyebrow ridges that mm -hmm. reptiles have and just lurking, staring at the camera. <laughs> Wow, these are really cool looking. Is there anything that they like like to eat or distracts them? No, or... just leave them alone. Oh, oh, there is something that distracts them. Oh. If you say it's jerky, I can't share with the Tortangos. Well, which, which jerky did you buy? I got the, the pine pig. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we make a recommendation that you don't buy the, the, the mango jerky when you go in there. Okay, good. Yeah. I thought about it. All the other way out. And Troy still goes, and the sea whip looks like it was out of a catalog. 
Wow. All of the grime, all of the salt, all of the all of the moss mm-hmm. has been like retreated as Sil is like peeking out. And it's just like all of this goo is now coming and and moss is just coming out of this barrel. <laughs> cool. That's a great use of a barrel, Sil. It, it is. I love your work, thank you. And then you see some key retrieval guards come out and be like, Yeah, I'm gonna get some snacks. You guys want anything? No, just just chips. Oh, I know you want a Sprite. I'll get you a Sprite, asshole. All right. And two of the guards the, of the ship next to you hop off and walk inside. And All right. Who, hey, old man, you have Sprite? <laughs> my, my, my guys, they love Sprite. I imagine Troy, like, hiding behind a newspaper like a P.I. in a cartoon uh, <laughs> with Gloria. And he's going to look up, uh, look down to his left and sort of gesture for Nani to go in and uh, send the message that we need to get out of here. And the old man kind of still has Umby into this huddle. He's like, oh, yeah, the thing they're attracted to is that all of the lights, you know, it's that we that from this this on, they have to be orange lights. Oh, because you have white lights. You know, the, tor- the Tortangos, they go by the light of the moon. Yeah. So they got, got all confused, and then their mama will come and kill you. Oh, that's really great information. Thank eviscerate you. Eviscerate your body. That's awesome. With that's- her giant appendages. All right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Well, here, let me, uh, can I give you something? Can I give you a tip for the next information? Oh, you another tip? Yeah. Why are you so kind talking old, old, old folk to old folk? Yeah. Umby slides it to Bloom over. Oh, thank you. Always bet on heads. And then puts the doubloon back in his pocket. Well, you got me there. All right. Hey, you kids, hey, stop messing around with the chips. <laughs> like these six kids are just all on top of their parents being like, I want this flavor. I want the ketchup chips. I want them. I never get to get the ketchup chips. There's only I'll never enough. I thought you were going to slide a bomb and you say duck and then blow it up or something. <laughs> also an option, Brandon. Yeah, you, you don't know it. Do I notice the key retrieval guy yet? Please make a perception check, my friend. I, have I noticed the key retrieval guys? Make a perception check, my friend. That is a six plus five for an 11. 17. Umby does not. Yeah. But Cammy, now that you have free range to be unseen and are looking around, you do see them walk in. Cammy is going to whisper to Umby that they're there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this man is like, what's wrong with you? Do they seem like they are going to split up and go to separate parts of the store? Well, let's see if they see you. Let's see if they see Umby. Like, all right, well, I got to go to the Sprite right now. I need to get Sprite. These guys, they love Sprite. I got to Sprite it up. One of them goes right for the right for the soda fountain and starts filling it up. Mm-hmm. And the other one is kind of just is waiting around. And be like, I don't know why he's so, he, his, his joke is Sprite. I don't know why it's a Sprite. Okay. What I would like to do is, I'm assuming the one who is not at the soda fountain is kind of in Umby's way to get out of here. Yeah, he's standing in the front. Cool. Cammy's going to say to Umby, Umby, go! And is going to cast apathy on the one in the middle there. Are D&D spells just mental illnesses <laughs> and symptoms thereof? <laughs> this one's a hex, too. Okay. Uh, so as an action, you choose one creature you can see within 60 feet of you to make a charisma saving throw. On a failed save, until the end of your next turn, the creature becomes indifferent towards one creature of your choice that it is hostile towards. I'm assuming it would be hostile if it's saw. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, what am I trying to beat? You have to beat a charisma saving throw of 16. All right, this the regular grunt number one uh, does not have high charisma. Cool. I'm going to say it's a plus zero. Oh, 16? 16. I rolled a 17. Fuck. Oh, okay. shit. All right. Uh, what happens when you try to roll something and it doesn't, like, does it, do you notice? It doesn't say that there is any consequence Consequence to it. What do you have to do? What are your, oh, because you have to laugh, don't you? Because it's a hex. Yes, I have to. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's when the guy might look up. Oh, no, I fucked up, Umbia. I'm sorry, I fucked up. And he looks up and says, wait a second, and reaches into his pocket, takes out the wanted poster. Fuck. And says, hey, you're the explosive old man. (laughs) What? Well, that's okay, Eric, because I'm going to take out a teleportation bomb really quickly as like a reflex and just like chuck it on the ground and roll it. 
and get it right between his legs and then to appear like right behind him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you have to do to make this happen? I have to throw the bomb. You got to throw Play it. on that. Nothing. Okay. Okay. So, and now my attack bonus is up to plus eight because of my proficiency, which is great. All right. I'm going to say this is a difficult shot. Uh, but he's also pretty surprised. So it would be like, I'm going to take the AC of what this guy would be and like add one to it. So I'm looking for a 14. Okay. <laughs> this is just a comedy of errors. I got a four plus eight for 12. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> We're doing great right now. I don't know what the problem is. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Should we just go back to the save point? Is that I, I, I forget. Yeah, should we keep right? your saves come? I forget what the bomb. I forget what happens to bombs when you when you miss. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, they just don't go oh, off. Oh, man. okay. Yeah, so you you roll it. It goes behind him, and then it goes. Yeah. <laughs> he goes for the walkie-talkie that's clipped onto his jacket. Oh no! Key retrieval team five. Key retrieval team five. The pirates are here. The pirates are here. Come in. Come in. <laughs> Can I take an action if I see him pulling this out or no? Nani's no. coming. Nani's coming. Nani's oh. coming. And that's when you you hear. Ding dong. <laughs> and then, and Nani, Nani walks between this guy's legs and looks up. You know what the fucked up part is? When I go unseen, so does Nani. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So she can't even open the door because it's probably a motion. You're right. Sensor. You're right. Naughty is outside banging on the door. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Troy, that is when you see like 10 dudes <laughs> jump out, like go hop, 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 and jump out of the ship that goes by. That goes by. Hi, you. Be like, we got him. I didn't think it would be at a convenience store, but we got him. Put down the Sprite. We're taking it. <laughs> We're taking it. The Pirates of the Sea Whip. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll sing you a song that all green folk know. Sing, sing.